Ah, the minivan. It was all the rage in the 1980s and 1990s, but before we can draw that picture, there was quite a bit of development that went into the making of the minivan. Around the 1960s, automakers offered large vans for big, busy families. Many automakers offered a third row, family-friendly version of their cargo van. However, majority of families sprung for the low-to-the-ground boat of a station wagon. By the 1970s, few automakers had the thoughts of furthering the idea of making the big cargo van with a third row seat more than just an afterthought. The idea was to design a van that was tailored to growing families, a vehicle that wasn't a big, large cargo van or truck, a vehicle you could park at home in the garage, a vehicle that wasn't just an afterthought of a cargo van. In 1972, Ford introduced the Ford Carousel minivan concept vehicle. This vehicle was a derivative of the third generation Ford Econo line with the goal of this vehicle serving as an alternative to full-size station wagons and passenger vans. In 1972, Ford designers were given the green light to work on what was called the Nantucket Design Program. It was the codename for the 1975 Econoline Club Wagon. Moving its engine several inches forward increased passenger space. However, with its staggered 7-foot height, its large size decreased functionality as a personal, family-oriented vehicle, making it difficult to pass clearance through an average garage door opening. Enter automotive legend Lee Iacocca, president of the Ford Motor Company. He directed the Ford Light Truck Design Studio to create a quote-unquote garbageable van. That was a little bit of a tongue twister there. Based on the Nantucket design program, the codename Carousel was given. Lowering the roof one foot and giving the vehicle more car-like styling, Ford's hope was to capture the eyes of growing families. The Carousel minivan concept vehicle was intended for marketing to buyers of full-size station wagons and passenger vans. It was based off the third generation Econoline wagon, like I said. It had a 124 inch wheelbase, the standard wheelbase length for the Econoline 1975-78 model year vehicles. It was designed with a height lower than the 6 foot 4 inch VW Microbus, a huge competitor at the time and it used the Econoline's 460 cubic inch V8 and Ford's C6 three-speed automatic transmission. It could hold five passengers. It had a flat folding rear seat to match the height of the load floor. It had several configurations that were designed, including a two rear bench seat and side facing perimeter seats, front captain's chairs, and to attract buyers, the roof line was styled with glass. And to finish it all off, it was fitted in wood grain, and the rear door was equipped with a tailgate and retracting rear window. Ultimately, after the 1973 energy crisis and the recession of the mid-1970s, Ford had no choice but to cut back on the new vehicle development. Henry Ford II called the end of the carousel project in 1974. By 1978, the Blue Oval had called it quits with automotive genius Lee Iacocca due to product development and management disagreements. Butting heads with Henry Ford II, he was let go on July 13th of 1978, taking his business to one of Ford's biggest competitors, Chrysler. Chrysler at the time was on the verge of bankruptcy, selling its Chrysler Europe division to Peugeot in an effort to generate some cash. The company had been losing millions in North America due to recalls on their Dodge Aspen and Plymouth Bolaire, both of which, Iacocca stating, were major factors to Chrysler's customer dissatisfaction. He then started his long journey of rebuilding the company from the ground up. He also brought in many former Ford associates. Spotting an upcoming trend in the automotive industry was no difficult task for Iacocca. With the fire in his eyes for the minivan project, Iacocca continued to bring the Minimax project to life, thus introducing the 1984 Dodge Caravan and Plymouth Voyager to the world in 1983. Great gas mileage, shorter than a full-size station wagon, and the ability to seat seven adults, plus the fact that there hasn't been any other vehicle made quite like this before, made Chrysler a sales success.
Thank you so much for spending time with me in today's video. If you like Ford's attempt at making the minivan, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you comment down below what you think about this minivan and if Ford should have made it and listened to Lee Iacocca and all of his thoughts on that minivan project. Thanks so much for spending some time with me today. Check out this video here next.